Good day everyone! Welcome to Math with Teacher Justin. On today's topic, we're going to write quadratic functions in standard form given the zeros of your quadratic functions. Okay, let's talk about writing the quadratic function in standard form given the zeros. Okay, all we need to do is to get the sum, the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. And then we're going to apply this formula based on our previous discussion on the relationship of the roots and the coefficient of your quadratic functions. This is the formula that we're going to follow. x squared minus the sum of the roots times x plus the product of the roots equal to zero. Now let's have some examples in writing the quadratic functions in standard form given the zeros. Alright, so we're, for example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots negative 4 and 8. If we're going to write a quadratic function given the roots, we need to get the sum and the product of the given roots. So let's add our roots. So negative 4 plus 8, we will get the sum that is equal to 4. Let's get the product. So substituting negative 4 times 8, the product is negative 32. And in writing this in quadratic function, we will use the formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0. Then we, and then we substitute the values of s and p to our um, formula. We will have x squared minus 4x plus negative 32 is equal to 0. Then simplify, we will have x squared minus 4x minus 32 is equal to 0. Now this is your quadratic equation. Now if you want to write this in function form, we will just change 0 to a function notation. So we will have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 32. Alright, okay, let's have another example. So for example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots positive negative 5. So when writing our quadratic functions, we need to get the sum and product of our roots. So in this case, we have positive negative 5. So we have two roots here that are positive 5 and negative 5. So that's what we're going to add and multiply later on. So let's add negative 5 and 5 to get the sum which is 0. Now let's multiply negative 5 and 5 to get the product which is negative 25. Now that we have our sum and product of our roots, we can now use the formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0 in writing our quadratic equation. So substituting, we will have x squared minus 0x plus negative 25 is equal to 0. Now simplifying that, we will have x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. Or if you want to convert this to a function, we will just change 0 to a function notation. So we will have f of x is equal to x squared minus 25. Okay, let's have another example. So for example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots 0, 7. So in writing our quadratic function, we need to get the sum and product of our roots. So in this case, we have 0 and 7 as our roots or zeros of this quadratic function. So let's add and multiply our roots. So let's add them first. 0 plus 7, the sum will be equal to 7. Now let's multiply our roots. 0 times 7, our product will be equal to 0. Okay, now that we have our sum and our product, we can now substitute that to our formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0. So let's substitute. We will have x squared minus 7x plus 0 is equal to 0. Simplifying, we will have x squared minus 7x is equal to 0. So that is our equation or quadratic equation. If we want to convert this to a function, we will just change 0 to a function notation. So f of x will be equal to x squared minus 7x. Alright, okay, let's have another example. So for example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots negative 6. If we're going to write our quadratic function given the zeros or the roots, we will get the, or we need to get the sum 
and product of our roots. Now, in this case, we have negative 6 only. If we encounter this type of situation or scenario, okay, expect that we will have 2 negative 6 in our roots. This is a situation wherein the, the vertex is along the x axis. Okay, so we will have 2 negative 6 as our roots. We will add, okay, so we will have negative 6 plus negative 6. So the sum will be negative 12. So for our product, we will also have negative 6 times negative 6. Our product will be equal to 36. Now that we have our sum and product of this quadratic function, we can now substitute that to our formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0. Let's substitute. We will have x squared minus negative 12x plus 36. Simplifying that, we will end up with x squared plus 12x plus 36 is equal to 0. This is our quadratic equation. Now, if we want to convert this to a quadratic function, we will just change 0 to a function notation. Okay, so f of x will be equal to x squared plus 12x plus 36. Alright, let's have another example. So for example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots positive negative 3i. So in this case, we will encounter roots that are imaginary. We will still apply the same procedure in writing quadratic function by getting the sum and product of our roots. So in this case, we have positive 3i and negative 3i as our roots of this quadratic function. So let's add, let's get the sum. So negative 3i plus 3i. So Let's just apply the rules in adding or combining like terms. So we have our sum being equal to 0. Next, let's have our product. So negative 3i times 3i. So negative 3 times 3, that will be 9i times i will be i squared. So our product will be negative 9i squared. But take note i squared will be equal to negative 1. So take note that our i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So squaring that, we will just cancel out the radical symbol and the square. Okay, so the value of i squared will always be equal to negative 1. Okay, so we will have negative 9 times negative 1. Our product will be equal to 9. Okay. Now that we have our sum and product of our roots, we can now substitute that to our formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0. Okay, so substituting the value, we have x squared minus 0x plus 9 is equal to 0. Simplifying that, we will have x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. Now, if we want to convert this quadratic equation to a function, we will just change 0 to a function notation. So, we will have f of x is equal to x squared plus 9. Alright, okay, let's have another example. So, for example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots 2 plus minus 5i. So, when writing quadratic functions, we need to get the sum and the product of our roots. So if you're going to observe our roots, we're given complex numbers. So don't worry, we're still going to apply the same procedure. So let's substitute our roots. We have 2 minus 5i plus 2 plus 5i. So in this case, we're just going to apply combining like terms. So 2 plus 2, negative 5i plus 5i. So the sum will be equal to 4. Next, let's move on to our product. So let's multiply 2 minus 5i and 2 plus 5i. Now take note that we're multiplying conjugates here. Now if you can still recall, in multiplying conjugates, we square the first term minus the square of the last term. So let's simplify. We will have 4 minus 25i squared. Okay, take note. i squared is equal to negative 1. So Let's 
change i squared to negative 1. So let's simplify. 4 minus 25 times negative 1. Negative 25 times negative 1, that will be equal to positive 25. So combining like terms, we will have our product that is equal to 29. Now that we have our sum and product of our roots, we can now use our formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0 and substitute our sum and product in our formula. We have x squared minus 4x plus 29. Simplifying this, we will have x squared minus 4x plus 29 is equal to 0. We can convert this to our quadratic function by changing 0 to a function notation. So we will have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 29. Alright, okay, let's have another example. So for example, we're going to write our quadratic function given the roots negative 4 plus minus the square root of 3. So in writing our quadratic function, we will just get the sum and product of our roots. So in this case, we have two roots. We have negative 4 plus square root of 3 and negative 4 minus square root of 3. So let's add them. Negative 4 minus square root of 3 plus negative 4 plus square root of 3. Now take note, okay, we will just combine like terms. So, so in this case, we will have the sum being negative 8. Now what happened to square root of 3? Okay, negative square root of 3 plus square root of 3 will be equal to 0. Now we have our sum. Let's proceed to our product. So we multiply negative 4 minus square root of 3 and negative 4 plus square root of 3. Now, in this case, if you're going to observe, we're going to multiply conjugates. Now, again, in multiplying conjugates, we copy the first term and then square it. Minus, copy the last term, then square it. So... When we square a radical, we will just simply cancel the radical symbol and the square symbol. So we will have 16 minus 3. Okay, and then simplifying this, we will have the product being equal to 13. Okay, now that we have our sum and product, we can now substitute that to our formula. x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0. Substituting it, we have x squared minus negative 8x plus 13 is equal to 0. Simplifying that, we will have x squared plus 8x plus 13 is equal to 0. This is our quadratic equation. Now, if we want to convert this to a quadratic function, we will just change 0 to a function notation. So, f of x is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 13. Okay, let's have our last example for today. For example, we're going to write the quadratic function given the roots 5 plus minus 2 square root of 2. So in writing quadratic function in standard form, we need to, to get the sum and product of our roots. So in this case, we have two roots. 5 plus 2 square root of 2 and 5 minus 2 square root of 2. So let's get the sum and product of our roots. So first, let's add them. So 5 minus 2 square root of 2 plus 5 plus 2 square root of 2. So in this case, we're going to apply combining like terms. So our sum will be equal to 10. Next, let's proceed to our product. So let's multiply 5 minus 2 square root of 2 and 5 plus 2 square root of 2. Now again, we're going to apply multiplying conjugates. So we copy the first term and then square it minus we copy the last term and then square it. So take note, we will apply the power of a product rule. Let's simplify. We will have 25 minus 4 times 2. We will also square the coefficient of our radical expression. Now simplifying this, we will have 25 minus 8 and our product will be equal to 17. Okay, 
Now that we have our sum and product of our roots, we can now substitute that to our formula x squared minus sx plus p is equal to 0. Substituting, we will have x squared minus 10x plus 17 is equal to 0. Simplifying that, we will have x squared minus 10x plus 17 is equal to 0. This is our quadratic equation. Now, if we want to convert this to our quadratic function, we will just change our 0 to a function notation. So, our final answer will be f of x is equal to x squared minus 10x plus 17. Now that you already know how to write your quadratic function given the roots or the zeros of your quadratic functions, it is your turn to try it. Please click the link in our description box below in order for you to test your skills. That's it for today. Again, I'm Teacher Justin. Goodbye, God bless, and stay safe. See you on my next video. Peace.